So uh, when I was teaching high school, one of uh, one of the many positive experiences I had was taking uh, groups of students to work on Habitat for Humanity uh, sites. And I did this both in Minnesota where I was teaching and uh, here in Pierce County when I was teaching at Henderson Bay High School. In Minnesota, we, I had one particularly uh, great experience where we, uh, the, I was teaching at a charter school and we set aside a whole week Kind of like a J term idea. And so we had, we, we created courses for the week. And so I created a course where we went to Habitat for a whole week, which was really great. They got some continuity, they got to see some things done. So uh, when I retired from teaching, I got the opportunity to actually work for Habitat for Humanity. And I currently work uh, for the Tacoma Pierce County Habitat affiliate here. And I'm working in the Aging in Place program. And Sharon is going to tell you a little bit about that. Um, uh, when we're talking about different groups here, we decided to invite Habitat, or I should say the forum committee decided to, and so I want to introduce to you Sharana Kilden, who is uh, Chief Development Officer for the Tacoma Pierce County Affiliate. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Can, can you hear me okay? Let's make sure my voice is projecting. That's my one criticism I get sometimes, <laughs> along with others. Um, <laughs> uh, so I'm Sharana Kildun. Um, uh, like Peter said, I'm the Chief Development Officer. So basically what that means is I get the pleasure of working with our donors, our volunteers, and overseeing our communications for the affiliate. Um, I've been with Habitat for about two and a half years, and it has been, I think this is the best job I've ever had. Um, and I understand that there's many of you in the room who have had volunteer experience with our local affiliate through the Gig Harbor chapter. So if you've volunteered with Habitat before, can you please raise your hand? Thank you so much. Um, is anybody still currently active with volunteering at uh, this time? Okay. All right. Well, we might have some opportunities for you here in the near future here in Gig Harbor. I hear that. Absolutely. <laughs> um, can we go to the next slide, please? Um, so I have a lot of, lot of slides that I put in here to get today, but I want to say if you have questions or something you really want to talk about, please feel free to um, participate and we can have a dialogue um, today about what we do and questions you have and um, housing and the housing continuum and home ownership and all kinds of stuff. But the mission of Tacoma Pierce County Habitat for Humanity is with God's grace and cooperation of people from all walks of life, Tacoma Pierce County Habitat for Humanity partners with families in need to build and own simple, decent, affordable housing. It just really speaks to me. Can we go to the next slide, please? Um, so we have a couple myths about Habitat uh, that a lot of people, I think, um, feel. The first one uh, that we hear a lot of times is that Habitat for Humanity gives houses away. And the truth of the matter is that it's not true. We partner with our families. Um, they must contribute at least 200 hours of sweat equity to building their home or the home of their neighbors. And they also pay an affordable mortgage that's within 30% of their income. So they are buying these houses. Go to the next slide. The second myth, um, <laughs> everybody thinks Jimmy Carter uh, was the founder of Habitat. And I love Jimmy Carter, um, but he did not found Habitat, but he is one of our biggest champions. And every year he does a Carter bill. Um, last year was an exception, uh, but the year before he was even out there um, swinging the hammer. And actually they did a little presentation that night. This was in 2019 and he had fallen and gotten a black eye, but he still made it out of the construction site, even with the black eye and up on the stage that night talking about his love for Habitat. So Jimmy did not found it. The founders are Millard and, um, uh, Millard and Linda Fuller were the founders of this. And they founded it in Americus, Georgia, actually on a farm um, uh, 
So over the years, globally, there's over 1,100 affiliates, and we've served over 4 million people from 70 different countries since the 1970s. It's pretty amazing. Um, in Tacoma Pierce County, we were founded in 1985 by a small group of volunteers that were inspired by the mission of Habitat. And to date, we've completed over 280 homes in our community, many of which are here in Gig Harbor. Thank you, Thank you. that's a big accomplishment. And that served over 27,000 people or 2,700 people, including children, probably 50% of those are children. Um, so what does a for, what does housing look like today? I'm sure you've read everything, maybe seen it in your own community. Uh, here in Pierce County, actually in Washington State, one in seven people are paying 50% of their income on housing. 50%. That's crazy. Um, I was doing some research about some statistics here in Gig Harbor, and the average rent is about $1,700 a month for a 900-square-foot apartment. Mm -hmm. I, I, <laughs> that's, that's more than my mortgage. <laughs> um, the median sale price in Gig Harbor is $725, and then in the key center, it's $480. Um, and then some unemployment rates. So unemployment rate in Gig Harbor is less than it is in Pierce County at 5.6% versus seven for the county. Let's go to the next one. Um, so what does Habitat do um, to address the housing crisis? We do three main things. Um, and the one that you all probably are most familiar with is new construction and re re rehabs of um, housing homes. So we do about six to 12 new homes a year um, and sell them to Habitat home buyers. In the last two years, we've launched a brand new program that Peter runs called Aging in Place, our critical home repair program. So this one um, was sparked because we were getting calls on a regular basis from seniors saying they needed help with their homes. They needed a, they needed a ramp, they needed a roof, they needed a, a grab bar. Um, and we would refer them to partners in the community because there are others that do this. But it would just got so incessant that we said, you know, our skill set is in construction. What can we do? And so we did some research. Habitat International has this aging in place program that we took a look at, and we were able to adopt it and bring it here to Tacoma Pierce County. Um, and so in the last, we'll go over some statistics here, but in the last couple of years, it's just grown so much. Um, so much so that now Peter full-time is working in our aging in place program. <laughs> and we'll be able to give some stories here in just a little bit, but this sort of overview. And then the third area that we recently um, grew into as well is what we're calling housing counseling. So um, we have three HUD housing and urban development, not federal HUD certified housing counselors. And so they sit down with families and go over their budgets and look at their spending and talk about how can we get you into your home or how can we get you to a point if you're having a hard time paying your existing mortgage so that you don't go into foreclosure. So it's a foreclosure prevention, it's a home ownership readiness. And then um, when the pandemic hit, we were able to receive some money from our local county through the CARES Act funding um, to, to um, administer mortgage relief services for those who lost their jobs and were having a hard time paying their mortgages. And just in 2020, from June to December, we served over 350 households and gave out over $1.1 million in mortgage relief. We're continuing those partnerships now in 2021, where our housing counselors have a portfolio of about 140 clients that they're working with, with housing counseling, and they've administered about 300,000 so far. So this is just, just continuing. So we're trying to keep people in their homes through our critical home repair, through mortgage relief or for closure counseling prevention, and then getting people into new homes. Those are sort of the three, those are, that's what we do. <laughs> um, so who are the families that we serve? So the families that we serve are, have an income requirement. So the income requirement is between 30 and 80% of the area median income. And so what that means, <clears throat> excuse me, is that for a household of four, 
that household total income is less than $72,000 a year. So that's sort of the type of families that we're working with for home ownership. Also for our aging in place program, we serve seniors up to 80% AMI. Yeah. So what is the income rate for people over 65? So the income rate is the same or is it No, the income range is the same. However, if it's a household of one, that's a lower number. And I don't know that off the top of my head, but we have it on our website. I can get it to you. <laughs> I'm no. sorry. I, I will talk to you about that a little later. Absolutely. Well, yeah, absolutely. Um, just as what we've seen is that a lot of the seniors are, that are coming to us, they're only on um, Medicare and Social Security. And the house is the biggest asset that they own. And to lose that or not be able to take care of that um, would be it would be really hard. So we're trying to make sure that they can stay in their home within their means. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we're always looking for homeowners and our um, seniors that are thank you <laughs> uh, that are willing to partner with us. And so what that looks like is for home new home ownership, it's sweat equity, and for our critical home repair program. We're a little bit flexible about what that looks like. It means being available when Peter and the team go into the house, moving things out of the way so that we can get to them if we need to, maybe helping with snacks for our team and volunteers. So we're very flexible with what that looks like, but we do want a willingness to partner. Yeah. So uh, when, when people move into a house, they become the owners of the house. Mm -hmm. So until that time, who owns the, the house and the property? Does the habitat own that property? Yep. Mm -hmm. Do they find their own mortgage or or do you uh, finance their mortgage? So um, historically Habitat used, so we own the land um, when we are building it and the home. Um, and historically Habitat was always the land developer, the builder, the social service um, coach, as well as the banker. Well, about five years ago, across most affiliates in the U.S., they moved away from um, providing the mortgages directly to homeowners. We can still do that in special circumstances. We're able to be the lender, but we actually work with um, connecting them to third-party um, banking providers uh, so that they can get a, a mortgage. But we have special relationships with banks, so it tends to be a smaller interest rate through our, our Habitat partnerships than it would be if you were just to go out and work with the bank. However, our mortgage rates right now are really low, <laughs> at all time low. So, uh, but right now we do, they do have a um, lending through a bank. And actually this year, we'll talk about it in just a moment, but we're changing the way that we sell our homes to, um, to a permanent affordable model and i'll get into that in just a moment um but they do own the home yeah um so we can go to the next slide but this is actually just a local family i want to show you here in Cake harbor who bought their house um, a couple of years ago um and with just a little quote about how they were looking to buy their own home on their own and they just couldn't afford it without coming through habitat um, So in the next five years, we have about 67 homes um, that we're gonna be building here locally. And that number actually might increase a little bit. Um, so we're finishing up right now in a neighborhood called Fern Hill um, in Tacoma. It's a four home, single home detached neighborhood. Uh, all four homes are in active construction right now. One of them is really close to being completed. Three out of the four homes are matched with families. Um, and two out of the three families are single moms. So, and they've actually become really, really good friends through their sweat equity process. And they're so excited to be neighbors. Um, so it's another part of the beautiful process of Habitat is that community building um, of people coming together. So then after Fern Hill, uh, we just finally got our contract signed and we're gonna be starting in early January on an eight townhome development in Madison, what we call it, Madison Meadows in South Tacoma, which is right by the Star Center and Boys and Girls Club um, off of South 67, the South Tacoma Way area. It's gonna be a neat neighborhood. This is actually one of the first times we're gonna be building townhomes. So they'll be right next to each other, 
sharing a wall and a roof, but the walls actually aren't shared. The way that Gomer's described them, it's actually two walls right next to each other. So <laughs> I think legally the only shared space is the roof connection. Yeah. Did you have a question? Uh, 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 once they purchase the home, if they aren't previous homeowners, uh, how how you ensure that uh, they uh, uh, take appropriate care of the house to the home after they have it, and, and don't let it just you know they don't understand the concept of taking care of their home. So they, they let it deteriorate to the point where it loses a lot of value. That could happen, I would think. And I don't think you have any control of that after you've sold the home. We don't have control over that after they sell the home, but we do have, as part of the home buying process, home maintenance classes and coaching. Gomer, our um, director of construction and site development, comes out and gives some best practices of how to take care of your house and your lawn and your pipes and like all kinds of things that he talks about in terms of home maintenance. Question I have is, is there any pushback? Uh, I think there's a lot of situations where you come to an area and they don't want this kind of a situation in their neighborhood because they don't like this uh, type of uh, lower level construction and, and you know, homes are more basic. They, uh, they, they, they fear that it's going to change their lifestyle or something. You know, I'm talking about pushback in the community. You see when they try to uh, so homeless camps or whatever they do. Anyway, you, you, have, you have some of that you have to deal with? Occasionally, um, but I have pictures of some of the homes that we're building today, and they're beautiful. They're yeah, well, I'm now, because <laughs> it was the, the, the not in my it, backyard. It, it, it sometimes you could say, no, no, not, not, not in that neighborhood. You do it out there. Yeah. Unfortunately, that does occur occasionally. Since I've been at Habitat in the last two years, it has not been a huge issue in the neighborhoods we're building. Um, but I'm sure that it does happen and has happened. Um, and what we do is we try to go and talk to the neighbors in the area about who we are and what we do. And, and then over time, what I've understood is that once they start seeing the volunteers through the construction process being there for so long, hearts and minds have changed once they start to understand what we're really about. Um, but it does happen. I'm sure it does. Um, but thankfully, I haven't seen too much of that in the last two and a half years. Did you have a comment about that? Sometimes that's a nice home for the neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're brand new. And they're brand new. They're brand new, new construction. They're beautiful. And now they have garages, too. We have garages in the last couple of years. Because um, you need to put your lawnmower somewhere or your bicycles for the kids or those. Maybe even your car. <laughs> well, maybe a car. My Christmas decorations go in my garage. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but that's helped with some of the things around the home that have been sort of just on the side of it because they, they didn't have, we weren't building them with garages. So where do you put the things that you need to live? Right? Yeah. Percentage of people that stay in their homes, it's 80, 90 percent. And, uh, you know, they take care of them because they help build them. They know how they're built and what's in them. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah, there is with that sweat equity process of people really putting their it, love it, and it effort into it. It seemed to me at one time they were doing one of these environments and they had trouble getting people who were interested. It, it, didn't have the uh, motivation or whatever. There's going to be renters then then do a little work and have their own home. Huh. I, that, that's what I saw happen. Interesting. So they, they were always advertising for people to take part in the program. Yeah. They, they had set X number of houses to build. We need people yeah. that are willing to uh, participate in this. Yeah. Well, it's a big lift to be a Habitat homeowner. Um, it's a it's a big commitment. It can take up to a year in terms of completing your sweat equity. Um, and it's a big, it's a big decision, um, transitioning from rental to home ownership. But the long term, now that we've been in the community for 30 years, we're seeing these amazing transformational stories of you know, children who moved in 20 years ago as habitat children in their habitat home. 
and have now graduated from college and have their PhDs and are going on and doing these amazing things, you think about just how important that stable shelter is for educational outcomes and family connection. And um, I think it's the best job ever, it's the best organization. <laughs> Um, but I'm excited we're going to be building this uh, spring starting in Gig Harbor. Um, there's been a piece of property actually not far from here near St. Anthony's Hospital. When I was driving here today, I was like, oh, you guys are going to have volunteer opportunities coming up soon <laughs> um, in, the, in the Gig Harbor area. So it's three homes. If you're going to St. Anthony's, you continue up the street and just on the left hand side, there's a private drive that goes down. It does butt up against the um, highway, but there's a lot of beautiful trees there. So the homeowners won't really see the freeway. Um, and we're thinking about like sound fair, you know, what do we do for construction levels to, to help with the sound? But when you're out there on the property, it really just sounds like a river. It doesn't sound too bad. It sounds just like you're next to some water. But yeah, so that's coming up this year too, probably start this year and complete in 2023. So we're very excited. Yeah. We have built homes for Habitat with 12 inch walls. I guarantee you they're not, they're a sound proof. Thank you. Papers inside the house. That's it. I do not do the home construction. That is not my skill set. <laughs> we have other professionals that do that. So, talking of the homes, this was our most recent neighborhood in Tyler Court. This is what our homes look like. of the homeowners that moved into that neighborhood are single moms. Uh, so this neighborhood is full of children. Um, it's beautiful. It's so much fun. Peter got to work on this neighborhood when he started at Habitat. Uh, even this house. Did you work on it? Work on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's what our homes look like today. Um, so what does it take to build the home? So the sticks and the bricks these days, I don't know if you've been to the um, hardware store recently, but try to buy a two by four. Uh, things are a little bit more expensive than they were a couple of years ago. So it's costing us about $130,000 uh, to build the Habitat home. And that doesn't include foundation um, and uh, land acquisition. So uh, and like we said earlier, we're the developer, we're the builder, and sometimes we're the bank. Um, so, as we talked about, uh, the cost to build has risen. Um, we've had a really, for years, a great relationship with Habitat International, who had a relationship with Whirlpool. So we would get all of our appliances in these homes donated for free into the Habitat home, which has been amazing and a huge cost saver. Um, well, because of the shortages due to COVID, Whirlpool can't do that anymore. So now we're on the hook to purchase all of the appliances to go in these homes. So the cost to build is just continuing to rise. And our homeowners' incomes, they're staying stagnant. And these are working families. One of the women that's in the um, in the, I'll be just a second, in the Fern Hill, in the Fern Hill neighborhood, she's a licensed therapist, single mom. It's a good job, but she can't afford to buy a home on her own. She can't afford the rent that is out there right now. She's gonna have paid less in her mortgage than she will for her current rent for her and her daughter. Um, and then affordable housing is just becoming more and more out of reach for families. So about two, actually three years ago, our board and our staff were really thinking hey, something's gotta change in how we do our model for long-term sustainability and be able to serve more and more people and to ensure that our community has affordable home ownership opportunities in the future, because land is going quickly, houses are <laughs> increasing ra rapidly. Um, our current model right now is the homeowner buys, or it was the homeowner buys the whole house and land. And there would be a shared equity agreement in the home that would over, year, over the years, if they decided to sell, Habitat would get first right of repurchase. 
we would repurchase the home. Sometimes there would be some equity sharing a part of it and the homeowner would walk away with a bunch of equity, which was great. That's what we want in generational wealth building. Um, but nowadays when people are trying to sell their homes for whatever reason, moving out of the state, um, things change in their life. We had one family who they just outgrew it. She got remarried and has another two kids on the way. And so they needed a bigger house. Um, and their income had increased over time, which is what you want for all of these families. Um, the Habitat house that we had sold them for about $100,000 15, 20 years ago, now appraised at $400,000. And Habitat has to rebuy that at market value. Well, we can, we can build a whole new new house way cheaper than repurchasing that unit. So we have to make some really hard business decisions. So what we decided to do, can we go to the next slide, um, is what we're calling a ground lease permanent affordability um, model of how we're selling our homes, starting with our Fernhill neighborhood. So we haven't done it yet, but this new neighborhood is how we're doing it. So essentially the Habitat homeowner will only purchase the house. They will not purchase the land. Habitat will retain rights of ownership of the land and they will lease it to us for probably about $100 a month. Um, and that lease amount is really, it's kind of like the canary in the coal mine. Um, if the homeowner's ever in trouble, if, they're, if they can't pay their lease payment, we can reach out to them and, and fix things, right, early on. So it's, a, it's an early indicator. But what this does is um, it lowers the initial price of the home that we sell it, because right now we have to sell it at market rate. And, our houses are appraising for four hundred thousand um, dollars. So now we can we can sell it to them for what they can afford, and our homeowners are only bringing about one hundred and sixty to one hundred and seventy five thousand dollars to the table in a first mortgage. So they'll buy it for that amount of what they're bringing to the table, and then we'll agree on a sh um, an equity year over year at a certain percentage. So if they decide to sell in five years, they'll know how much they're getting. In ten years, they'll know how much they're getting but we're, we're limiting that equity, but there's guaranteed equity in their home. So because of the lower price and because of there's a re, this resale restriction of how much they'll get at time of sale, and that it also restricted that it can only be sold to another income qualified home buyer, it ensures there's a lower price at resale for the next group of homeowners coming into the pipeline, and that each of these units will be affordable forever and ever. So every unit that we build in Habitat is now a permanently affordable home for our community. And as that portfolio grows and houses and everything continue to grow, we're going to be able to recycle these homes forever, which is pretty, I think, amazing. So that's the big unveiling news of Habitat. And I'm happy to answer any questions or talk to you more about this offline. I had the privilege of doing a lot of this research on this new model. So it was a, it's a very similar to a community land trust model um, that's been around for over a hundred years. Uh, so that, that means that you're much more involved with each family the whole time. Yeah. I mean, you don't just give it to them and you don't give it to the neighborhood. You know, just take possession and then you're done with it all. Yeah. So, yeah. so that means that you have closer monitoring also. Yeah. yeah. We have a vested interest in the long-term structural <laughs> of both the homeowner and the, and the unit itself. Yeah. Uh, is Pierce County and uh, is there any solar power on the mountain? So we don't provide the solar panels, but starting the entire court that we just finished, we pre wired them so that they can do solar. So, um, and that's how we're doing our bills moving forward. So we can't provide the solar panels themselves, but the homes are already prepared to have it to, so that they can so that they can join the program. Is that for the the Very cool. Yeah, I Oh really? That's great. Is he still up there? No. No, uh, it's a county. Uh, oh, very cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Do 
to the next slide. Um, so I already told you where the location of Canada is, but we're very excited about coming back over here to the bridge um, and building these units. Uh, so this is what the design, uh, early design is. I don't think this is going to be the final design, but essentially they will be three single family detached homes, um, probably two levels. So on the one level, there'll be, I guess this is one, this is the one will be single level, uh, master bedroom connected to a bathroom, two more bedrooms, uh, family room, kitchen, dining room, and there's stairs and you can put a garage in the front. So it's a really nice plan. It's modest, we're modest builders, we're not custom home designers. But they're comfortable. And our fireplace Maybe. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I don't know. That's what they do. Yeah. Yeah. Is it a Yeah, it is. Yeah. 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 Maybe the bay window. No. <laughs> well, that's not going to be within the gated community. No, I know we have to tell people that all the time that it's not part of the gated community of Canada, Canterwood, but it's on the Canterwood Boulevard, the, the road, and so that's why we named it that. And we thought it was kind of funny that our habitat has a neighborhood as well. <laughs> why can't we build in Canterwood? I don't know. <laughs> that would be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so then our aging in place critical home repair program. Um, I told you a little bit about how we got into it, um, but the expert actually in this room is Peter. Um, he could probably tell you all kinds of stories about some of the seniors that we work with. Um, go to the next slide, please. This was a recent one, Teresa. Do you remember working with Teresa, Peter? Uh, no, I think that Mike was there before he left. Was that Mike before he yeah. left? So. Um, so this was something her sister had written to us after we worked with them. Uh, our family cannot thank you and Habitat enough for the gift of the handicap ramp. My sister Teresa is disabled on oxygen and in a wheelchair bound. When she leaves her home, which is not often, and usually only to attend medical appointments, the ramp has made it so much easier for her and her family to get out of her house. Especially awesome is the platform from their porch which covers several steps that were so difficult for her to descend and climb. It is such a relief and less frightening for her to leave her home. Thank you again, and Mike, and Mike for the terrific installation job. So we still work with, um, Mike was a site manager for us for many, many years, um, and he recently retired, but we kept him on as a contractor to do some of these ramps <laughs> when computer's too busy with other projects. Um, but that's just one story. And like I said, we've already, I think we plan for this fiscal year, which is July to June, to serve 38 um, seniors, veterans, and people with disabilities in the 12 month period. And we're already at 22 jobs completed. So we're definitely going to exceed. Um, it's just trying to keep up with the resources to support it because you, um, you never know what you're going to get into. We're doing um, a couple of roofs a year. We're one of the only ones in the community doing roofs. and. One, one story of a woman, we, her neighbor reached out to us um, because she was a retired school teacher living in her home and uh, her home had sort of started to deteriorate. And apparently there were raccoons living in the, in the ceiling and she needed some other things happening for medical purposes and stuff. So the neighborhood was able to come together and help her get to her medical appointments, help plant the house help get rid of the raccoons. Apparently they don't like rock and roll music. <laughs> um, <laughs> but they didn't know, she basically said, I think this house and this roof is being held together by moss on the roof. Um, could Habitat come in and help? And so we came in and we checked it out and I understood that it probably was being held together by moss. Uh, it was in a terrible condition. And so our team came in with, we have a partnership with GAF Roofing where they provide all the materials and they help installers come in and donate their time. Um, and we were able to get her a brand new roof. Uh, so it was very, uh, uh, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
Any other tidbits or stories you want to share? No, that's it. No. Okay. <laughs> I'm just excited about this program. I think it's really great. Um, and it just keeps us out in the community. And we're going all over the place, you know, from Spanaway to Lakewood to Tacoma. To, I think we've even done some um, projects over here on this side of the bridge. Well, one, we did one right across the street here. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, uh, right the street. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So we're all over the place with this program. So you can prepare some mobile homes for Apparently, yes. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is unusual because a lot of homes uh, won't do that. Right. So uh, you still try to make decisions on that mobile people. Yeah. yeah. They do have to be the homeowner, um, or we have to work with the homeowner. Uh, we've done some ramps of family members who are bringing senior relatives or into their home before, um, but we do have some requirements there. We can't do it on rental units. Um, we can't modify or change someone's personal property without their permission. So we have to keep it with the homeowner itself. So, yeah. Have yeah. you, uh, you worked any with uh, any small home projects? Uh, tiny houses? Tiny houses. Um, we have not. Uh, everybody, we get that question a lot, actually. Um, but we have not gotten into the space of tiny homes. Um, we have a couple properties that we acquired recently. Um, surplus properties of the city of Tacoma that they um, were negotiating with. And we have a concept of a, um, it's not exactly a tiny home, but it's like a, a small cottage village, one level really for actually seniors, um, sort of we've envisioned this cottage style homes. So that's sort of where we're going, but. I think we kind of go back and forth about the tiny homes in terms of who is it that we're serving that's more kind of transitional housing and we're in home ownership so not sure if that's the right step for us but it's not off the table it's just it's not in our in our current plans and like who are we building for right a lot of times it's for families with children and i don't know if a tiny home would work for that but this cottage village for seniors might be a really neat idea we got We do. Yeah, we really do. Um, and with new construction, the cost to build is just going up so much. And I'm hopeful with some of the infrastructure packages that are coming through the county and some of the um, ARPA funding that the jurisdictions have, trying to get our hands on it for some of the infrastructure work or some land acquisition. So we have a lot of conversations with our local jurisdictions about how can we help maximize and get as much affordable housing out there as possible. Um, but timeframes for, I mean, it just takes a long time to get from when you acquire the piece, the parcel of land to when you can actually move someone in and permitting is delayed back and forth. I mean, this Cannerwood project, we were ready to go with some funding over a year ago, but there's this road that's narrow and we had to get the fire marshal involved and go back and forth with the county about if we needed to do a retaining wall or not. And so back and forth, back and forth. Now I think we're really close to having a plan, but it's just, those units could have been done and sold, but they're all the, the devil's in the details. So yes, we need the money. Yes, we need the infrastructure. That's why our government partners are so important. Our donors are, we couldn't do this without our donors. Um, and what percentage of your funding does come from federal and state funds? Um, that's a good question. I think we are at so 40% of our 35 to 40% of our funding comes from our homeowners' mortgages at time of sale. Then about 40% comes from fundraising that my team does with individual donors, community events, uh, in-kind donations, and government contracts. So that gets to 80. And the, re the rest comes from our store revenue, um, maybe the, the fundraising is a little bit higher. So within the government, it's probably like seven to 8%. Yeah. 
but we try to get government funding in all of our new construction, um, at least to pay for the infrastructure pieces of it. And then a lot of times they have down payment assistance for homeowners as well, which is very helpful. Yeah. And the in-kind donations are amazing. Uh, so many contractors, so many uh, loans, home depot, they, yeah. they step up. You ask them, uh, contractors will come out and offer their people and their materials and water cases. Next thing you know, all the drywalls up, all the texturing done. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. It is amazing. Um, and our partnerships, we, yeah, uh, we've had more people in the last couple of years step up and say they want to sponsor a home. So our house sponsorship is about $75,000, which is a little less than I said is the sticks and bricks, but it's a huge giving level for that home and it helps us so much. Um, and it's just so amazing to have that individual support from families. We have a couple of churches that have done it and we have actually the Warehouser alumni, there's this group that has come together and they raised enough to sponsor five houses, five or five in King and five in Pierce, so 10 houses over the next five years. So it's just pretty amazing how people from in-kind donations to individual giving to group um, fundraising together, just lean in and help Habitat do what we do because we can't do it without everybody. Uh, Oh, and then our HUD housing counseling. So this is the newest program I was telling you about where our HUD certified housing counselors are helping people with uh, foreclosure prevention. There was one woman that we worked with. Um, she, uh, she was retired and living off of uh, her social security and Medicaid and a little bit of retirement. Um, but she would offset her mortgage by having international students who were coming to school at TCC stay with her, would rent a room from her. Well, when COVID hit, all of that income from that rental went out the door. And for the first time in her entire life, she was scared about paying her mortgage and she had to go into forbearance and that continued for a while and she was terrified. So she found out about our program and reached out and talk to our housing counselors and she's financially savvy like this woman is it wasn't anything she had done she had just lost a stream of revenue that she was counting on for her mortgage um, and we were able to help her with about three or four months of mortgage and she said it was the first time she had had a good night's sleep in a couple of months because she didn't know what to do and she was so scared she was going to lose her house so these type of partnerships are just amazing and that we can help people in the community so so that, that's not uh, just people that live in habitat how does it benefit anyone yeah. to have that kind of counselor absolutely yeah including our habitat homeowners so we have we did have about um 16 percent of our existing habitat homeowners struggle through covid and needed um some mortgage relief and some a tune-up on their financial budgeting um so our homeowner counselors have been working with them over the over many months um, to get them back on track. Yeah. Yeah. We all have kind of a bad day every now and then. You never know what's going to happen. Uh, so, ways to get involved. Uh, so, if anybody is interested in volunteering with us, especially with Canterwood around the corner, or if you have family members that you think might be interested, it's really easy to get involved. You basically attend a new volunteer orientation. We have one a month online via Zoom. Um, we do do background checks for all of our volunteers and we have three ways to get involved. We have three retail stores, one in Tacoma, Kualup, and one in Lakewood. We haven't made it over here to the bridge yet, but who knows what the hell happened. Um, uh, you can volunteer on the construction site and then we also are always looking for people to help us with some snacks for our volunteers, snacks and lunches. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, you don't have to have any construction experience to get onto a Habitat build site. Um, I don't know for all of you that have volunteered for Habitat, I don't know if you've had it before, but I don't know how to do much. I, my skill set is somewhere else. It's not on the construction site, but I've been on the, on the site many times and they give you a hammer, they show you what to do and it's really fun. It's really fun. Um, so anybody can come out. We have, uh, store shifts uh oh well our shifts on the construction site are about 8 30 to 3 30 
Um, we do have age requirements, so you have to be at least 16 years of age, and that's an OSHA requirement. Um, but you can't use any power tools until you're 18, and you can't get on a ladder until you're 18. So if you have kids or grandkids that want to get involved, we welcome them, but we do have some age restrict restrictions. And then, uh, yeah, I talked about our habitat stores. We're always looking for gently used uh, furniture, appliances, construction materials, and we have a, a truck that will come out to you. Um, we have, if you give our scheduler a call, or talk about what it is, we can't take everything. So I'm sorry if you have called and we haven't been able to accept it. We're one of the only organizations accepting furniture right now, and we're a little overwhelmed with the furniture level. So we do try to take everything, but we, we can't always. So please be patient with our team. Because if we take something that we can't sell, then we have to get rid of it. So just <laughs> please be patient with our team. But we please give us a call if you have something nice that you want to do. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Um, so if you launch in a store, it's actually it's really fun too. You can clean, you can price, sort things, help customers, be the cashier. We have multiple shifts throughout the day. Um, and teens, 16, we say 16, 17 years old, but we've had a little bit younger come out to the, the stores as well. So that's pretty fun. Um, and then snack providers. In March, we're restarting what we call our Collegiate Challenge Program, where colleges throughout the country decide, organize a group of students to come to different affiliates throughout the nation. And we've become a really popular affiliate. I think people really enjoy their time with us. So we're always looking for help with that program. It's every week in March, we have a new group that comes out for an entire week. We need lunches, we need snacks, and then sometimes we even need places for them to crash. So if you have a house or a place that people can stay for multiple days at a time, they clean up after themselves. So let us know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, of course, you can always help us through donations, attend an event, make an, an annual contribution. And also, we have a really neat program called Cars for Home. So if you have an old car that you don't know what to do with, you can donate it to Habitat. Um, we have this program. They'll take care of everything, and then the proceeds from the sale will come to the local affiliate. So it's a pretty neat. And that program's actually been growing a ton. So it's kind of neat. If you have any cars? And so the other program we have for a lot of churches that we love and you might be familiar, some of you might be familiar with is our Building on Faith program. So essentially on Saturdays, we have build days, uh, four to six months during the year. Um, and we allocate one of our houses every year is our Building on Faith home or multiple churches and um, people of faith come together to, to build a home and sponsor a home. Um, so our 2021 Building on Faith house will be actually the first house at our Madison Meadows townhome house. Um, it's in partnership actually with one of our longtime volunteers, Bill Barrett, who passed away a couple years ago, and his family is doing it in honor of him. And we're partnering with our faith community and his church to, to have our Building on Faith home for 2021. And then our 2022 Building on Faith home will actually be here in Gig Harbor at Cannerwood. Um, our friends at Chapel Hill Presbyterian here in Gig Harbor have sponsored that house, um, but we are still looking for churches to come together on multiple days and partner for our Building on Faith 2022 house. Um, so they, they'll they have guaranteed volunteer days, but they said, I don't know if our congregation is gonna make all those days. So they're gonna be reaching out to other churches in the area to see if you guys wanna partner for those two as well. So just to FYI. Um, can we go to the next slide? Oh, uh, we also have what's called the wall of hope. So churches and companies can purchase a stud um, that they bring into their congregation and sign well wishes. Um, it's $750, um, send your blessings, your well wishes to the family. And then every year when we do our building on faith home, we collect all of those studs that um, have all of those beautiful prayers on them. And we frame the house, the building on faith house with those studs. So it's a really fun way to get the congregation involved, but also not get onto the construction site and know that your prayers and love have gone into at least one habitat home that you're supporting a family. That's it. That was a lot. Sorry if I talked too long. <laughs>
Any qu more questions? Yeah. If you're a sustained giver, there's a magazine down there back there on the right table that you get every month from Habitat. So it kind of keeps you up to date on what's going on with the week. Good for keeping time and balance it. So help yourself a little bit. Now, you said that Habitat spends on the other side. What's the one in Belfast? That so that's part of the Kitsap affiliate. Oh. So every affiliate, so in, in, there's the international organization, the mothership. <laughs> so many of you might also be donors to that. And a lot of those resources end up going to the global work, which is amazing. Um, and then there's the local affiliates here. So it's, we, we serve Tacoma Pierce County, which does include Gig Harbor. Um, but then there's the Kitsap County uh, that's really close by. So they're the Belfair and Bremerton stores. Thank you. Thanks, Ron. Thanks, Ron. Yeah. Thank you.